So wanted to start off with the image that I thought about when I thought about ticketing on, when I think about ticketing on Broadway. And I don't think anyone can really argue that the TKTS booth really is that symbol. I mean, in some ways, it really represents the best of Broadway ticketing. It's a monument to ticketing in the middle of Times Square. It's every Broadway theater sort of working together, tickets being sold under one roof. On the other hand, it probably represents some of the worst of ticketing on Broadway as well. When, when any show goes on sale originally, the question is, what, am I, what are my prices going to be at the booth? They're pricing based on this competition with other theaters. What's that discount going to be when it's sold there? And at the same time, you know, how is it going to look compared to prices of other shows? So that's a little bit of a snapshot of where we're at today. And I want to kind of fast forward and say, what do I think ticketing is going to look like on Broadway 20 years from now? Now, there's a host of answers that I think I could pretty easily give. Talk about the use of social media, talk about digital ticketing, really talk about all those things that they talk about at the ticketing conference I was at last week. But honestly, they kind of bore me. So <clears throat> I wanted to go a different direction here. I wanted to really think philosophically, how is it going to be different? And I also wanted to come up with probably the most outrageous thing I could come up with. So you know, as Jim mentioned, I do my work right now um, in the form of dynamic pricing. There's a lot of people that view what we do as the embodiment of the free market. Um, so I'm going to take the exact opposite approach and talk about cooperation. So when I think about what ticketing is going to be in 20 years, I'm imagining everybody working together. Kind of like that TKTS booth, if you will. Every theater <clears throat> finding a way to work together. Why can't you have the equivalent of an event discovery site, not just the day of the show, but all the way leading up to it? So someone who comes in and says, you know what, I just want to see a Broadway show, and I want to see it a Tuesday around 5 o'clock, can actually find every option available. Why not have all of these different sales channels where tickets are being sold working together and not competing with each other instead of having <clears throat> your Groupons, your StubHubs, or even your brokers out of the street undercutting, undercutting the theater for a show? Why not view them as an extension of your sales force that allows you to go wider on distribution without undermining price? These are the places that I think Broadway ticketing can be in 20 years if it's done right. So I guess the question is, you know, why is cooperation, why does it matter? Why is this such an important topic? And I think the answer is, you know, in some ways, that we're at a crossroads. You know, in, one, in one extreme, you can see this bright, rosy picture that I painted. Everyone working together. Ticket selling, full houses, increased distribution, you know, better sales. On the other side, there's this world where everyone is competing with each other, undermining prices, prices going to zero, shows not being able, not being able to stay open because they're not making any money on ticket sales. And I know that sounds a little dire, but <clears throat> coming from coming from my background, what I've seen in other industries. It's entirely possible. So I, t I went on StubHub the other day and looked at buying tickets for not quite a show, but I guess you could call it a show, just on the other side of the river, uh, the new, one of the New Jersey Nets games. And what I saw was tickets priced at a penny. And not just one or two, hundreds. And then I got to the more expensive tickets. A couple were 33 cents. We got really pricey at about 76 cents, and a few went over a dollar. <clears throat> And how did that happen? Well, we've basically taken this monopoly and given other people our inventory. And people are trying to sell it. And I think one of the questions that you have to ask in this is, is our lower price is good? And a lot of times they are. I mean, I've heard a couple people talk before about making Broadway more affordable. In fact, I heard a great poem about it, I guess, about 20, 30 minutes ago. And, and it's true. A lot of times, price prevents people from coming. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes those lower prices really aren't doing anything. 
all they're doing is having a bunch of people fighting for the same pie. And as a result, they're shrinking it. And it's not, and now it's the same customers. We're not putting anyone extra in the seats. And that causes a vicious cycle, which isn't any good for anyone out, for anyone. And so the question kind of is, you know, how did we get this way? Why are these other, there are these other channels selling our tickets? And I guess to probably start off, let's take a look at the way we sell our own tickets. I'm sure all of you have bought, it, have bought tickets recently. I'm sure you've all seen a CAPTCHA, um, which is the nice computer's way of saying, we want to make sure you're a person. And there's a couple words here that I normally can't make out on the first five tries that you've got to type in to be able to, be able to buy a ticket. And if you don't take anything else away from this talk right now, I highly suggest you go through to try to buy a ticket and click vision impaired. It is one of the uh, more humorous uh, sounds you'll hear in a while, and you'll realize that if you're vision impaired, you cannot possibly buy a ticket today. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it, it's sort of strange, though. I mean, here we are. We're making people jump through hoops to come out to our theaters. And you've really got to know question why. And the answer is, at one point, all of these ticketing systems that we all use weren't designed to sell a ticket. They weren't designed for wide distribution. They weren't designed for allowing you to choose your own seat or all of the things that people have talked about before. They were designed to prevent people from buying tickets. And that's not the situation we're in today. So, <clears throat> so what's happened is we've created a market for these other channels. And some of those channels are the brokers that have offices on the corner out here. Some of them are you know, giant exchanges like StubHub. Some of them are Groupon that we feed with inventory all the time. And the fact of the matter is, these other channels frequently have better access to inventory, often lower prices, and certainly, without a doubt, a better buying experience than we provide at the box office. And the problem is, the way we've, what we've done with our tickets, the way we've had these other channels operate, we're not working together. They're, they're getting tickets, and we're either allowing them to, or they're trying to game the system to do it, or there's all sorts of different ways that this happens. But when it does, we're now fighting for the same customer. We're not expanding out to new customers. If we do, it'll be great. It's this big sandwich over here. There's a lot of things we can do. We can increase distribution. We can leverage these marketing dollars from all of these different sources and really drive sales and make this industry better for everyone. Or we can compete with each other. And not only are we going to be competing for the same customers and the same pie, but we're going to shrink that pie for everyone. And you know, why does that happen? Well, I can launch into a, got a nice picture of the beautiful from, from the movie A Beautiful Mind here. I was going to talk about Nash Equilibrium and all that, but uh, I think that might bore everyone. But <clears throat> I mean, the fact of the matter is, when, you when you're all competing against each other for the same person, what happens is you want to undercut someone. Why not charge a dollar less? And if that other channel is charging a dollar less, do you come in and charge a dollar less than that? And at what point does it stop? And at the end of the day, it's worse for everyone. But it's sort of these economic forces at play, and it's really hard to stop. So how do you stop it? Well, these guys did it. And <clears throat> before I put a picture of OPEC on the board and kind of advocate some things that I'm sure the government would have some issues with on all sorts of different antitrust legislation, now let me just say this isn't actually the answer. But it's a different way to think. It's how do we put everyone under the same roof and say, we're trying to work together. We have a common goal. If we compete against each other, we're going to drive each other all out of business. But if we work together, we can all be better off. And that's kind of the question. So what if we can make all of these different sales channels an extension of our sales force? Maybe providing tickets on consignment, finding different ways to work together. What if we could get every theater in the same point? in the same room. Again, trying to find ways to work together. Make it so that the ticket buying process, again, was this event discovery site. 
you know, I know it's, it's difficult for everyone who has a vested interest in a given show, but they did a survey not too long ago. And one of the questions was, what show do you most want to see? And the most popular answer far and away was any Broadway show. So <clears throat> there's a lot of great shows out of there. And there's a lot of people that want to see specific ones. But for the people who don't know, why not be able to direct them somewhere? Instead of having each theater have its own box office separately, you know, sell tickets through, through a different website or a different call center, what if there was a way to leverage all of that? That person who wants to go see you know, the Book of Mormon and she finds out it's sold out, what if they had five or 10 other options there at the same time of that show they wanted to see? There's no reason not to. But it involves a level of cooperation across, across everyone. And if we can get there, there's an opportunity for the pie to grow. There's an opportunity to see more show, sold out shows. There's an opportunity for a wider distribution across different shows. You know, Broadway has the ability to help each other. Right? People come, and a good theater industry is good for really every show and every theater. So you know, within the theme of cooperation, you know, we need to find a way to work together, um, both as theaters and then also, again, all of these different sales channels. And that's about all I have to say. So thank you very much for having me. <laughs>